So we have talked about functions already a bit, right? We have talked about what functions are. We've covered the concept of domain ranges and also talked about inverses, right? So what's left is uh, first of all quadratics, right? A lot of questions come from this, and you know most of it because quadratic is a is also a different chapter, but there's also some more in light of functions, right? So you will be increasing your knowledge of quadratic a bit more, right? Then we also have to cover modulus functions. And lastly, but most importantly, composite functions, right? Okay, so let's kick off with quadratics. Quads, quadratics, right? So, the reason why quadratics is here again in function is because uh, there's something more to it, right? So if I draw, you know, the classic quadratic y equals x squared, let's draw this. So this is y equals x squared, right? And this is the turning point. The turning point over here is the least value, right? The turning point is where the gradient is zero. Right. So in functions, what happens is that they play around with the domain and ranges. Right. So if if over here the, the domain is not restricted, the graph would stretch all the way there and stretch all the way there because it's taking all the values as far as you can go. Right. But let's say I restrict the domain. Right. So the domain is actually negative one to let's say three, right? So what that looks on a graph is that here's negative one, here's three. What that looks on a graph is you're only taking this, oops, you're only taking this portion of the graph, right? This would be three, right? So what this means is that you're only taking values one to three, hence your graph looks something like this, just the yellow part. Right. And if I were to ask you what is the range of it, right? So you know that nine is of course the largest it gets. Right? And just to recap, when you're describing any range, you tell the upper limit and the lower limit. So over here, the upper limit is definitely nine, right? You, you know that for sure. But what may be a little bit more tricky Okay, so over here there is one. What may be a little more tricky is that when it is negative one, the y value is one, the y value is one, but that's not actually the lowest value. We know that the lowest it gets, it's actually zero, right? So for this particular domain, right, if you're taking the values negative one to three, the actual range would be zero to nine. Right. So this is the main thing uh, in domains and domains and ranges of quadratic the quadratics that you have to understand that just because this is a smaller value of x does not mean at all that it will give you the smallest y value. Right. Just as we saw here, negative one gave us the y value one, but the actual lowest value was the turning point itself zero. Right. What turning point means is that this is the lowest you get, right? If you go to the left, the y value is something higher. If you go to the right, the y value is something higher, and this is the lowest point. Right. So this is for this particular domain. This is your range, right? So this is something that's asked a lot in your question. If you open the marking scheme, you will see a lot of questions. So of course, even though it is always good to have a general sketch in mind and Whenever, personally, whenever I see most of the questions like this, I draw a rough sketch. If not on paper, I at least try to have a mental sketch in mind, right? So usually it is always uh, better to have a sketch, but uh, in your exam, if you want to quickly find the answer, right? You would follow certain steps, right? And you would get used to the step, right? So if you have been given any quadratic and you've been given any domain, Right, let's say your domain that you're given is a to 
b right and your quadratics and your quadratic looks something like this right this can be anything uh, okay so what you do is first of all you tie you check what is the what is the y value when it is a you check what is the y value when it is b and also you consider the turning point right the turning point will be q of course so let's say this gives you some value let's say this gives you some value the way you find the range is from these three you pick one that is the lowest and you pick the other that is the high so in this case q was actually the lowest so q is less than equal to f of x which is less than and let's say this was the highest so this would be your answer right and if you whenever you encounter this question which uh, if you're doing the marking scheme you will do a lot just for you can just follow these three steps to always get the answer but if you can do if you can do a little bit of more thinking right what you could do is you can check whether the x value of the turning point is included in this domain or not right so here i took the values negative 1 2 3 i know that the domain i know that the turning point lies at the x value 1 so if i'm including the values 1 2 negative 1 2 3 it will definitely include the turning point hence i need to take that into account on the other hand if i let's say took the values 1 2 3 right so at 1 it is also the y value is also 1 so if i'm taking the y if i'm taking the domain as 1 2 3 i am leaving out okay so 1 2 3 would look something like this i am leaving the turning point out of this so my range would simply be f of 1 is less than equal to f of x which is less than equal to 3 which would turn out to be 1 is less than equal to y is less than equal to 9 right so if your domain consist if your domain contains the x value of the turning point you have to take it into account if it does not you can just ignore it